Hey everybody. All right, so this is Jeopardy for chapter four. So first category, self-presentation and self-knowledge for 100. To highlight the serious student part of your self-concept, you emphasize your good study habits and downplay your fun qualities. This self-presentation tactic, tactic is known as what is the self-verification perspective. So these are the processes we use to lead others to agree with our own self-views. Ingratiation involves what? What is praising another person or using flattering language? Another tactic to get us to get others to like us or to make good impressions is self-deprecation, which involves what? What is lowering an audience's expectations of one's abilities? So we might uh, imply that we're not as good as another person. We might communicate admiration or we might lower uh, someone's expectations of our abilities. All right, so presentation for 400. Ma, here we go, let me do this. Lana imagines what graduate school will be like when she was an undergrad. When she's in graduate school, she found out that what she thought it would be like is completely wrong. What is this prediction known as? What is affective forecasting? All right, self-presentation for 500. In order to come to a deeper sense of self-understanding, what could one do to gain self-insight? What is take an observer stance? All right, personal identity and social identity for 100. Okay, how we're different from in-group members describes what type of comparison? What is intra-group comparison? We're going to 200 here. Okay, personal and I, uh, personal identity and social identity for 200. How we're different from out group members describes what type of comparison? What is inter group comparison? Our many selves can be all be accurate or correct portraits of ourself and accurately predict behavior depending on what? The context and comparison dimension. So no one of our, our personal self, or our mo multiple social identities is our true self. Rather, all of them could be correct portraits of ourself. All right, so for 400, the process by which we compare our present selves with our past selves so we can feel good about ourselves by perceiving improvement over time describes what? Autobiographical memory. So this holds true for the more distant past self. We have greater criticism for this particular type of self. What factors encourage the development of self-control? What is? It can be increased by thinking abstractly about our goals and with practiced self-regulation. The 
Okay, social comparison for 100. William plays softball on the weekends with a group of friends from work. He believes he is a better pitcher than Tyreek because batters have fewer hits when he pitches than when Tyreek pitches. What is this type of comparison referred to? What is a downward social comparison? Recently, Annabelle got a short story published in an online literary magazine. She was very excited because this was her first publication. However, two weeks later, she read a masterful story by Toni Morrison, one of the most famous writers in America. Annabelle then didn't feel so great about her own story or the fact that it was accepted for publication. This is an example of a what kind of social comparison. What is an upward social comparison? Catherine and Amy are members of the same sorority at college and are members of the school swim team. They've been trying to master a difficult dive from the high board at the college's swimming pool. Amy is showing faster improvement in the dive than Catherine is. If they compare their performance as individuals, social identity theory suggests that what? Which of these would you think? The option B is the correct choice, that Catherine should dislike Amy more. If Amy's better than her, Catherine will then distance herself from Amy if they're comparing the performance on an individual level. Now, if we take the same scenario, I won't spare you reading it all over again, but we're looking at the bottom line here. If they compare their performance as teammates and sorority sisters, then social identity theory suggests that which of the following would be true. In this case, since we're looking at it from the team perspective, then the choice is C, that Catherine is going to like Amy more. And we're still focusing on Catherine's behavior here. So that is why choice C would be the correct one. Okay, and social comparison for 500. The tendency to see oneself as better than others is referred to as what? The above, the above average effect. So most people show unrealistic optimism when it comes to their outcomes relative to others, and they think that they're better than most on many dimensions. And even people who are objectively low on certain traits show this pattern of self-enhancement. All right. So we're in our last couple here. Self-esteem for 100. How is self-esteem responsive to life events? Well, our reflection on our successes boosts self-esteem, whereas reflection on failures decreases self-esteem. Self-esteem for 200. Feelings about the self of which we're not consciously aware defines what? What is implicit self-esteem? Self-esteem for 300. Positive self-talk, such as I am a lovable person, tends to what increase or <laughs> tends to what happiness for people with what self-esteem? So does it decrease or increase happiness for people with high or low self-esteem? So the correct answer here is that it tends to decrease happiness for people with low self-esteem. So those self-help books might not be all that great for folks with low self-esteem. So what happens is that low self-esteem individuals, um, this form of positive self-talk serves to remind them that they might not measure up and it makes them feel worse than better. All right, self-esteem for 400. Migration 
can initially have a negative effect on self-esteem. Typically, students who go to uh, a different university outside of their country, they find that they tend to improve about six months after the process. And the two factors that led to improvements in well-being were increasing their self-efficacy and a high degree of social support. So how does self-esteem and gender relate to occupational discrimination? What is? Women who work in occupations with frequent discrimination have lower self-esteem than women who work in occupations with less frequent discrimination. And then the final category, self and prejudice for 100. Why do people with concealable stigmatized identities have lower self-esteem? What is? Because concealing their identity makes them feel inauthentic and decreases forms of self-disclosure that make interaction more positive. Self and prejudice for 200. How can underperformance effects be prevented? Well, there's a few things that can prevent these effects. One, by affirming valued attributes. So we're affirming the self in another way. By exposure to a stereotype defined role model. And by distancing from aspects of the stereotype that are incompatible with high performance. So this is a reduced identification, which alleviates the threat experienced. Self from prejudice for 300. Zoe, an attractive blonde, is concerned that she might say something foolish in her college algebra class and be perceived as a dumb blonde. Resultantly, she doesn't answer questions posed to the class. This behavior can be explained by stereotype threat. And finally, well not finally, why do stereotype threat-based performance decrements occur? What is? Because they evoke anxiety. Finally, self and prejudice for 500. The research on stereotype threat illustrates the importance of what for the experience of the threat to the self. What is group membership? And that concludes Chapter 4's Jeopardy. I hope you enjoyed it.